Hey you guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. You know, it occurred to me the other day that there are a couple of data sets that I've never really spoken about on this channel that can be really helpful when it comes to diagnosing fuel delivery problems on your GM OBD1 uh, equipped car or truck. These will work whether you have an electronic carburetor, throttle body fuel injection, or even some of the later multi-port systems that were made prior to 1995. So if you'd like to learn about these data sets or just want to know a little bit more about how your car delivers and meters fuel, well then stay tuned because we're going to jump right into it. All right, so before we go any further, just know that you are going to need a scan tool capable of reading data from an OBD1 system. Now, I like to use my GM Tech 1A. If you can find one, I'd strongly advise you to pick one up. Uh, I also have an Auto X-Ray Easy Scan 6000. You can still find these sometimes on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. They are also discontinued, however, because manufacturers just no longer support OBD1 equipment. But having said that, if you do have one of these scan tools, you are going to be able to take a look at some of this data in real time. So now to get into the nitty gritty and a little bit of background. If you've seen my videos before, or you're familiar with OBD1 engine systems, you'll know that they do not maintain a precise air fuel mixture when the car is running. They err from lean to a little bit rich, back to a little bit lean, and so forth. They work on the law of averages, and if the average uh, mixture amount is 14.7 parts air to one part fuel, they are happy. And the way that these things work is um, as technology advanced, so we went from electronic carburetors to throttle body fuel injection onto the later multi-port fuel injection units, uh, they didn't actually improve the way that they deliver fuel to the engine. Uh, the engine just responded faster. So in a, an electronic carburetor, uh, you're going to move those metering rods up and down to get the mixture you want. Uh, they're going to move 10 times a second. Then we moved on to throttle body injection. Now you have fuel injectors, injections, injectors. You can adjust the pulse width. Um, they respond a little bit faster, but you still have a wet manifold, meaning that whether it's an electronic carburetor or a throttle body fuel injection setup. Uh, once you change that air fuel mixture, it's still gonna have to travel down through the intake manifold, through the runners, and to the actual cylinder itself. So there's a little bit of a delay uh, when the computer makes a change. That brings us to multi-port. Now you have an injector right on the other side of the uh, intake valve, so the engine will respond to these changes a little bit faster. The systems didn't get more precise, the engine just responded faster. So that brings us to our first data set that you should be taking a look at, and that is the O2 cross counts. Now, what is this? So for those of you that know, an oxygen sensor works, uh, it gets hot. Uh, when it heats up, it creates a uh, amount of voltage that's fed to the engine computer through usually a single wire. Uh, that is measured on the millivolt scale. It usually ranges from about zero millivolts, indicating a very lean condition, to 900 millivolts, indicating a very rich condition. So when we look at that, we realize that 450 millivolts is the dead center. So what happens is the engine computer will adjust the air-fuel mixture so it travels a little bit higher than 450 millivolts, making it a little rich. It'll then move back down to below 450 millivolts uh, on the oxygen sensor, indicating a lean condition. The O2 cross counts is the amount of time, or the number of times, that that uh, millivolt readout swings over 450, either a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Now, what does this tell us? You want to see that number high because that indicates that your computer's doing a good job of swinging that uh, mixture from rich to lean and rich to lean and the oxygen sensor is seeing the exhaust peg back and forth a little bit over each side. If you have a low number, 
uh, of cross counts, that could indicate a problem. That would indicate that the computer is not able to compensate and either change the, the mixture to a little bit lean or a little bit rich and something is wrong in your system. So that's a real quick, easy way uh, to take a look and see if the system is running properly. If your O2 cross count number is high, that's exactly what you want. And one more thing, while these scan tools only update, I think it's about once every 1.25 seconds. These are very crude, old technology from the early 80s. So they can only do uh, <laughs> one or two things at once. They can either manage the car's engine and fuel mixture, or they can communicate with the scan tool. They can't do both really well at once. So you will be seeing a delay uh, as things update. But if you're seeing a very slow or very long delay, I'll say more than four or five seconds uh, between that cross count change, just know that you may have a slow oxygen sensor, one that's not uh, reading as it should, and it's running a little delayed, so it may be time to change out that oxygen sensor. All right, now what is the next data set that we want to take a look at on our scan tool readout? And that is the integrator number. What is the integrator? Well, for those of you familiar with newer systems, that would be your short-term fuel trim. These are quick changes that the computer makes depending on engine load and other uh, information it receives from the sensors. Uh, say you take off from a stoplight real quick, the engine's obviously gonna have to compensate for that. That would be your short-term integrator uh, or your short-term fuel trim or your integrator. Now, the integrator runs on a scale between 0 and 256, 128 being the middle ground. That's the number or right around the number you're looking for. That indicates that the engine isn't running too lean or too rich. Now, if you see a number above 128, what does that tell you right out of the gate? That tells you that your engine is running lean and the computer is adding fuel to compensate. And on the flip side of that, if you see a number well below 128, you'll know that the engine is mechanically running rich, something is wrong, and the engine is subtracting fuel to compensate. Now, in their infinite wisdom, GM actually built something into this system to account for mechanical wear and things like that when it comes to these, and that is called the block learn. And I'll get into that in a second, but just know that if the integrator has to run a certain way, either a little rich or a little lean, eventually it will update the block learn cell for those driving conditions so the car doesn't have to compensate as much, and I'll get into that right now. Now, what is block learn? Well, the easiest way that I always describe it to people is think of it like a big spreadsheet. On one side, you have RPMs. On the other side, you have engine load. How is this load determined? In um, carbureted systems and throttle body fuel injected systems, it's determined by the MAP sensor. Uh, in newer multi-port systems that have a mass airflow sensor, it's determined by that. All the computer does is look at the RPM, look at the engine load, and find a cell. That cell will tell us the last time it ran optimally and what the fuel mixture was, and it will default to that first. All right, guys, so that's it. A couple of data points that you may be interested or may need to take a look at if you're servicing your General Motors OBD1 car or truck. Thanks for watching. I hope you were able to learn something today.